Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa was born in 1836 to a devout family in rural Bengal. As a young man, Ramakrishna was interested in pursuing God consciousness above all other studies. He joined his elder brother, who was then head priest at Dakshineswar Kali Temple, a holy site that is still active today. When his brother passed away, Ramakrishna was appointed as the temple's priest. Continuing his own spiritual practice, he studied with some of the accomplished practitioners who visited the temple. When he met with Totapuri Maharaj, a Naga monk of the Dasami order of Adi Sankara, Sri Ramakrishna experienced a complete awakening of God consciousness. As he became more well known, people of all social backgrounds visited Sri Ramakrishna at the Dakshineshwar temple. In his teachings, Sri Ramakrishna emphasized the unity of all religions in leading to the ultimate goal of knowing God. Many of his lectures were recorded and later published as a book by one of his prominent disciples, Mahendranath Gupta. This five-volume Bengali classic was translated into English as The Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Its pages are filled with spiritual wisdom that is imparted in parables, clear explanations, and caring dialogues with disciples. We now present to you an excerpt from Chapter 2 in the company of devotees. Explanation of Evil Master, sin begets its own result. This is God's law. Won't you burn your tongue if you chew a chili? In his youth, Mathur led a rather fast life, so he suffered from various diseases before his death. One may not realize this in youth. I have looked into the hearth in the kitchen of the Kali temple when logs are being burnt. At first, the wet wood burns rather well. It doesn't seem then that it contains much moisture. But when the wood is sufficiently burned, all the moisture runs back to one end. At last, water squirts from the fuel and puts out the fire. So one should be careful about anger, passion and greed. Take for instance, the case of Hanuman. In a fit of anger, he burns Ceylon. At last, he remembered that Sita was living in the Asoka grove. Then he began to tremble lest the fire should injure her. Neighbor, why has God created wicked people? Master, that is his will, his play. In his Maya, there exists a Vidya as well as Vidya. Darkness is needed too. It reveals all the more the glory of light. There is no doubt that anger, lust, and greed are evils. Why, then, has God created them? In order to create saints. A man becomes a saint by concurring the senses. Is there anything impossible for a man who has subdued his passions? He can even realize God through his grace. Again, see how his whole play of creation is perpetuated through lust. Wicked people are needed too. At one time, the tenants of an estate became unruly. The landlord had to send Golak Chaudhary, who was a ruffian. He was such a harsh administrator that the tenants trembled at the very mention of his name. There is need of everything. Once Sita said to her husband, Rama, It would be grand if every house in Ayodhya were a mansion. I find many houses old and dilapidated. But, my dear, said Rama, if all the houses were beautiful ones, what would the masons do? God has created all kinds of things. He has created good trees and poisonous plants and weeds as well. Among the animals, there are good, bad and all kinds of creatures, tigers, lions, snakes and so on. washing away the heart's impurities with tears. Neighbor, Sir, is it ever possible to realize God while leading the life of a householder? Master, Certainly. But as I said just now, one must live in holy company and pray unceasingly. One should weep for God. 
When the impurities of the mind are thus washed away, one realizes God. The mind is like a needle covered with mud, and God is like a magnet. The needle cannot be united with the magnet unless it is free from mud. Tears wash away the mud, which is nothing but lust, anger, greed, and other evil tendencies, and the inclination to worldly enjoyments as well. As soon as the mud is washed away, the magnet attracts the needle, that is to say, man realizes God. Only the pure in heart see God. A fever patient has an access of the watery element in his system. What can quinine do for him unless that is removed? Why shouldn't one realize God while living in the world? But, as I said, one must live in holy company, pray to God, weeping for His grace, and now and then go into solitude. Unless the plants on a footpath are protected at first by fences, they are destroyed by cattle. Need of a Guru Neighbor Then householders too will have the vision of God, won't they? Master Everybody will surely be liberated, but one should follow the instructions of the Guru. If one follows a devious path, one will suffer in trying to retrace one's steps. It takes a long time to achieve liberation. A man may fail to obtain it in this life. Perhaps he will realize God only after many births. Sages like Janaka performed worldly duties. They performed them bearing God in their minds as a dancing girl dances, keeping jars or trays on her head. Haven't you seen how the women in Northwest India walk, talking and laughing while carrying water pitchers on their heads? Neighbor you just refer to the instructions of the Guru. How shall we find him? Master Anyone and everyone cannot be a Guru. A huge timber floats on the water and can carry animals as well. But a piece of worthless wood sinks if a man sits on it and drowns him. Therefore, in every age God incarnates himself as the Guru to teach humanity. Satchitananda alone is the Guru. What is knowledge and what is the nature of this ego? God alone is the doer and none else. That is knowledge. I am not the doer. I am a mere instrument in his hand. Therefore I say, O mother, thou art the operator and I am the machine. Thou art the indweller and I am the house. Thou art the driver and I am the carriage. I move as thou movest me. I do as thou makest me do. I speak as thou makest me speak. Not I, not I, but thou, but thou. Compassionate viewers, we appreciate your company on today's words of wisdom.